Okay, now we are to our last animal group that we will study this year. I know you're excited to be at the end of the year. So once we finish mammals, we will move on to us, the human body, and we'll study it till the end of the year. So as we look at mammals, um, we're going to look at character. Tonight we're going to really just look at the six characteristics of mammals. And you'll notice just even from the pictures, we're, we're, we're talking about a wide diversity of species. Um, some are really, really tiny, and some are the largest um, on our planet. Now, I should also just make a quick note that I am sitting at the ballpark for my son's baseball practice, so you may hear a coach, you may hear cars drive by, but I'm in my, my little minivan watching my son practice and doing biology all at the same time. So, just bear with me if you hear strange noises. Okay, so you have a guided note sheet, and hopefully, um, I'm following it along with you. Hopefully, I will answer all the questions on here. If not, just let me know in class tomorrow, and I'll answer those for you. The key mammal characteristics that I want you to note are that they do breathe air. Um, and why don't you just write out to the side that they breathe air through their lungs. They are all warm-blooded or endothermic, which means that they can maintain constant body heat regardless of what's going on. Um, in the weather outside. They do have a four-chambered heart. They have specialized teeth, and we're going to look at those. Uh, they also produce milk for their young and mammary glands, and they all have hair. And I know as you begin to think about some of these animals, you're thinking, I don't know that a whale has hair, but they actually have hair around their mouth. And even elephants in that dry, scaly skin, that's actually what keeps them cool in those hot temperatures are um, the the mud and the water will get down into the very tiny hairs and actually cool them off. So I have a video here for you. Hopefully the echo will not be there. I will try to play it back before I post it and hopefully all of that works. Mammals from giant whales to small mice, to great apes, much like ourselves, are among the most advanced of Earth's creatures. All mammals share two traits. We feed our young with mother's milk, and we have hair, more or less. Mammals nursing their young produce fewer offspring than other animals, but the youngsters have a much higher rate of survival than newly hatched birds, reptiles, and insects. This young orangutan will stay with its mother for eight years. Hair, like the coats worn by these high alpine huanacos, offers mammals another advantage. Hair and the sweat glands that come with it helps mammals stay warm in cold climates. Over time, mammals have moved into nearly all of Earth's habitats. Polar bears have adapted to life in the Arctic, where the inhospitable cold makes fur coats essential. Marine mammals, like porpoises and humpback whales, thrive in cold oceans. They still have a few hairs around their mouths, but a more efficient underwater insulator is a thick layer of fat, keeping heat in and cold out. Elephants battle heat. Their skin, covered in fine hairs, is wrinkled, making it easy to trap cooling mud in the creases. Spots on the coats of leopards and cheetahs help them hide. Their fur works to camouflage the big cats stalking prey in tall grasses. There are 7,500 species of reptiles and amphibians, and some 8,600 species of birds. Only 4,100 species of mammals exist, but they dominate the land and sea. Mammals have evolved with greater speed and agility than most other animals.
limbs that are lined up to support weight and drive mammals forward, help browsing mammals run from mammalian predators armed with tooth and claw. And when natural advantages fail, some mammals fashion tools to help them out. This orangutan is working on a spoon to help him scoop ants out of a tree. Tool making was once thought to be a skill exclusive to the human mammal, but all great apes and some other animals make tools. So what separates us from the rest of the mammals? Our ability to communicate, to parent, to show emotion. Perhaps a better question is to ask what makes us all so alike. Okay, uh, now let's look at let's go through these kind of individually, and I'm not going to spend a lot of time on them because I don't want the video to be too long. But I do want you to note that there are two types of mammal hair. There's under hair. This is the stuff that's thick stuff down here and guard hair. And usually guard hair is what's going to give it its color and um, will help in some other areas for the mammal as well. So the functions of the hair are insulation, camouflage, weapon, and sensory. Insulation, um, uh, the beaver, their under hair so protects them from the icy waters that the water doesn't, the cold water doesn't even really ever touch their skin. Um, camouflage, there are animals that uh, change colors from summer to winter, so they can actually be camouflaged in the snow, kind of like we see here with this polar bear. He blends in with the snow, um, so that's camouflage. The weaponry, you can probably imagine, would repel attackers, like the porcupine can use his skin to repel one anim other animals that would want to attack him. And then sensory, usually that's involved in the whiskers, the whiskers of animals, kind of like cats and dogs and seals. Um, they are supplied with some sensory nerves, so those those hairs are specialized. So just note that about they also have two pairs of limbs, and they use these limbs for locomotion, to walk or jump or run or hop, um, for feeding, and also even at times communication. Now, you might be thinking, now the whale, I know the whale is a mammal, they give birth to, to live babies, but they don't have two pairs of limbs. They do. In fact, it is their front limbs that are their forelimbs that are fused into massive swimming paddles and so they use those to help them swim. Okay now let's go through the different body systems. The body systems um, have all the same parts that we have so let's just go ahead and start with the digestive system. Um, interesting I'm sure that you have heard of chew the cud with especially with cows so these animals are called um, ruminates and they have this this special part right here to their stomach. I don't know if you can see my little highlighter right here. It's called the rumen and it's kind of a temporary storage for food. The food will go in, follow all these little arrows here, the food will go into the esophagus and they will partially digest it in this rumen and then it will come back up the esophagus. They'll chew on it some more so it goes through a partial digestion par process here then it'll come back out and then when it goes back in then it will go through these other two parts which is just part of the stomach so it will go through these two parts and then out to the small intestine. Now in the small intestine it's right before that it gets to the small intestine right here it goes through this part called the cecum and the cecum is kind of a pouch like extension that contains bacteria that also is part of the digestion process. So in this picture here we don't see the rumen. It, it just goes through the esophagus, through the rumen in the stomach, through the small intestines, and then before it goes on to the large intestine it kind of holds in the cecum part right here. So for test purposes I will want you to know the rumen and the cecum because those are new parts. Those are new parts to our digestive system. Okay, another new part for mammals are all of these extra teeth. And there's three different teeth that I want you to know about. There are the canines, and they're located here in kind of a pink reddish. And then there are the molars. It says molars and premolars. I just want you to know molars. And then the incisors. Those are the, the front teeth right here that would be involved in um, 
cutting, gnawing, and grooming. And you can see here that these there's some definitions here for canines, incisors, and molars. You might want to just jot down a few little extra notes. Um, I think I had you write down um, teeth and their functions. So the molars are used for crushing and grinding. The incisors are used for gnawing and cutting. And the canines are um, used for piercing and gripping and tearing. So you'll need to know those three vocabulary words. All right, let's move on to breathing, the respiratory system. All the same parts. It has a lung and a trachea and a bronchus, but there's a few new parts that I want you to know about. There is the larynx. This is what gives mammals their voice box. So for the bird, it was the syrinx. That was their song box. And so the larynx is right up here at the top. And this is where air passes down the throat. And this is the voice box. It's kind of a, made of cartilage, um, and it contains the vocal cords. This is where vibrations happen to where you can actually produce sound. The other new part that I want you to know about is right here, and it's the diaphragm. Um, this is what separates the lungs from the abdominal organs. And this air is drawn into the lungs by the contraction of the dome-shaped diaphragm. And then this bottom picture here, I just wanted you to see the air goes in and the diaphragm will flatten. And then when air goes out, the diaphragm is pushed up. Okay, the circulatory system, we're going to keep this pretty simple because in about three days, or actually um, next Tuesday, we're going to be going over all of these body systems in more detail than you are going to care for. So as far as this chapter, the things that I want you to know about the circulatory system are three key features. They have a four chambered heart. You can see this right here. The, the heart is right here in the center. And it really only looks like two, but two are the ventral side, two are the atrium side. These side parts here are the capillaries and the veins that are going into the lungs. Um, so they do have this four chambered heart. Then they have um, they're able to maintain constant body temperature regardless of the temperature that's outside which allows them to function at high um, metabolic rates. So um, two of the things that I wanted you to note on your note sheet. Name two ways that mammals use their circulatory system to adapt to the weather. Um, dogs are going to um, cool off by panting. They're going to cool the warm blood that's directed to the tongue and mouth lining when the animal is overheated. Now, also, an elephant has a similar way. They have thick skin that serves as protection, but it also holds heat. Um, the network of blood vessels in the elephant's huge, thin ears, however, bring blood near to the body surface and can cool it um, quite a bit. Now, small animals and large animals are going to hibernate. So I'm giving you about two or three examples here. Hibernation. Uh, now, bears, when they hibernate, they, can, they will wake to usually go to the bathroom. Um, you can actually wake them up. Um, but for these small animals, their metabolism is going to slow so much to the point that they become unconscious. Uh, and this helps them when the temperatures are so, so low and their food supply is very reduced. And that all happens from their circulatory system. Okay, now let's talk briefly about their nervous system, and which also involves responses to stimuli. The only really part that I want you to know about the brain is their cerebrum. This is this, the largest portion of the brain right here. This is the spinal cord, and this kind of dark purple part with some lines in it, that's the cerebellum. But the part that I want you to note for testing purposes is the cerebrum, and that's where intellect and instinct happen. This is a horse brain, but it's very typical of other mammal brains as well. Now, the two keenest senses for a mammal are their smell. That's why uh, dogs are used for hunting and dogs are used for uh, law enforcement, for drug sniffing purposes. But also, probably their second keenest sense is hearing, especially in bats. And you can see here how they can find their prey due to their, their innate sonar capabilities of um, catching sound waves. So those are the keenest senses for mammals. Okay, the last part is the reproductive system. There are three characteristics of reproduction that I want you to note and to remember. The monotremes, and we briefly talked about those a little bit when we were talking about fish, 
and um, other egg laying animals. Monotremes are mammals, but they do lay eggs. So they are uh, oviparous, but they have hair, uh, they have memory glands, and so all those things make them a mammal. Then the second one is placental. Uh, we are placental. This is where the babies are actually developed and grow and mature inside the mother's womb um, in, a, in a placenta that connects to an umbilical cord, and she's able to actually nourish them for the entire time that they are developing. And the third part, the third type of reproduction for mammals are marsupials. Now, I've given you here just a few examples, koala bears, kangaroos, um, some others that I want you to just kind of research on your own. But marsupials, their babies do not develop in a placenta. The babies actually grow and develop inside that pouch. Now, some pouches face the front, some pouches face, face the back, and so those will just be dependent upon the different types of species. So for your notes, just make sure that you list these three types of mammal reproductions and give me an example. So we have the duck duckbill platypus for the monotremes, just about any animal that you can think of, dog, cat, elephant, tiger, lion, human, all of those are placental. And then these four right here are um, examples of marsupials. Okay, that is the end of tonight's lesson. Uh, I'll probably have a Google Doc sometime a little bit after 7.30, so check back for that. But uh, go ahead and get your notes. I uh, won't be very long. If I decide not to do one, I'll send out a text and tell you not to worry about it. But I do want you to watch the video and take the notes regardless of the Google. Okay, have a nice evening.